Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Alliance We Play Dota 2 League. It is the second game between Team Liquid and Alliance in this best of two series. We saw a great first game coming out from Team Liquid. Once again, thank you for joining us. My name is Mont. With me is LD. How'd you enjoy that first game, LD? What a game. What a friggin' game. I mean, Liquid... We know Fluff in the past has been the one who likes to tinker with his drafts to be Alliance unconventional, and well, we're seeing the influence of NEL. Uh, I think someone said artizi has been doing the picking the Medusa a bit. At least I saw a post about that. But man, they came out sweating, right? They run the Medusa safely in the TC mid. Quakefa straight into the jungle as Batrider, completely abandoned the offlane giveaway of four minute Midas to Lotus lifestyle. And normally that's a recipe for trouble against the Lions, but no fear, no hesitation. They crushed them the rest of the way, and now it's time for game two. Liquid Alliance seven and one in the group, I believe. So. Alliance already said you have 5-2. Liquid guaranteed to advance no matter what as the one seed, but if you're Liquid, it's not just about what seed you advance at. It's Ten. about making a statement here, and they're going to come out swinging. Uh, they pick up the Batrider immediately into the Abaddon as well, and, well, Alliance, first pick Wisp. I hearken back to the International 3 Grand team Finals. Liquid's the team that picked Wisp bad. first won every single game, so will this be a repeat? We'll find out. Yeah, I guess so, and it's not surprising that, you know, you let the Wisp through, it, it's going to be picked up, and by either side, really, I mean, both teams, I think, are okay with that hero, but Alliance, of course, is just so strong with it, and you talked about the Ten TI through Grand Finals, you're absolutely right, you know, they play that hero so effectively, and then on, to top it off, you see Chen seconds, uh, picked up by Alliance, which is just Aki's, one of his heroes, if not his best hero, I think, and, and just does so well with it. Reserved. The Abaddon, or Abaddon, or Abaddon, I guess, whatever it is, for Team Liquid, is going to be really nice to have, especially with the Batrider, the Aphotic Shield, we actually saw Alliance pick those two heroes up and I believe the second game coming out against uh, For Sweet Revenge. So Team Liquid, they've kind of got a weight off their shoulders here with that victory they got in the first game. So they can kind of clown around a little bit, which might have been what they were doing in the first game, but you know, we'll see what they want to do. <laughs> There's the Elder Titan band coming out from Alliance, and you kind of expected that. Yeah. <laughs> At least for now. You know, I feel like if you're Alliance, you're we don't really know how to deal Alliance with the TC, so we'll ban him for now. We'll scrim against him a bit. We'll try running him. We'll start to understand the hero, and then maybe we'll play against him. But after getting clowned on by Bulba last game, ultra kills out the Wazoo, crushing the mid lane against the TC against an S4 Quap, who's a pretty decent mid player to put it mildly. They'll ban it out now. Uh, and let's see what Liquid does instead. So they get the Life Stealer. Now they've got a great combo. Quake for Bat Rider if they want to go for that. Uh, the Life Stealer uh, could be his offlaner instead if we want to see a Bat Rider mid for Bulba. A lot of Five options for Liquid as far as how they land this. But I think the big thing that stands out to me right now is you're up against a Wisp. And all three of these heroes are very hard to kill. Abaddon, obvious aphotic shield, and his ultimate borrowed time. Batrider, very elusive, and if he gets a blink, even more so. And then Lysteer with Rage and Infest. Nobody's an easy burst kill. And when you're up against Wisp, if you can't if you can't be burst down, then you can turn the fights around. So already, I think this looks decent for Liquid. They have given away Wisp, and they've given away the Ake Chen. Uh, your, your comfort food for Alliance, if you will. So let's see where Alliance goes from here. Yeah, I think they'll still be able to get grab the towers early on with the Ake Chen, and de depending on who uh, they want to give uh, Admiral Bulldog. But you know they'll be able to push towers down, they'll be able to grab uh, maybe a couple of kills and early ganks early on. But you mentioned how everybody's tanking on Team Liquid, and you're absolutely right. So you know, uh, Team Liquid, I think is comfortable playing against this hero. I think they realize that we can get farm, we can get kills and pick offs here. There's not a whole lot of lockdown other than the IO coming out with that tether stun. There's a bounty hunter which can grab track, give you that movement speed. But the thing is, there's I mean. You know, how are you going to stun these guys is the thing. And, and you know, Tethered is going to be really the only thing. And that's not even really reliable when it comes down to it. Life Stealer obviously, obviously has Rage. And the Abaddon, of course, can Aphotic Shield any other sort of, you know, some sort of disable off. But when it comes down to it, Team Liquid, they're, they've got a remaining. pretty strong draft. But Alliance, that's going to be Bounty Hunter. And that's probably going to be going for Ammo Bulldog. And Five it's a good hero. Remaining. Great for tracks. Great for, of course, fighting. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I I, I do find it interesting, though, because it's Alliance, this is now either, I think it's three games where they could have taken a lone druid, and every single time they chose not to. So I don't know if they just want to experiment, if they feel like the lone druid, it doesn't lane well against lifestealers, Alliance so that might be one of the concerns, is uh, if you do pick a lone druid here, uh, then you can leave TC 1v1 against uh, the lone druid, and he'll win the lane. I mean, even against Bulldog, because you just right-click the bear, you get the HP back from Feast, and it's a lot of HP. Uh, so, and then that frees you up to run a bat mid and a really aggressive tri lane. So maybe that's why they're not going for it in this particular game. But 
I still feel like Alliance maybe a bit discombobulated. So since they've gone for EO and Bounty Hunter, Ten their lineup is remain. very reliant on finding kills in the mid game. I mean, they don't have any AOE Five to speak of. Remaining. They don't really have team fight right now, aside from Chen's Hand of God. They don't have much lockdown aside Reserve from time. Tether, uh, but Liquid have a lot of ways to deal with that Tether stun. The Aphotic Shield, the Rage. Alliance's lineup Puck. is, well, here we go. This is going to be the, the core Team of the lineup. It's the S4 Puck, by far the most important here on this team. He's got to have a good start. He did yeah. it last game, but he, he's not going to have an insanely bad matchup or anything. So uh, I expect to see S4 step up a bit. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And honestly, I don't mind the bounty answer pickup, specifically because they, you know, Ten they run low on Druid right. so often, and that's fine. You know, that's one of their core heroes, obviously, Alliances. for Admiral Bulldog. But Ten it's okay to experiment every so often now, and I think that's maybe what they're trying to do here with this bounty hunter, or at least just find a place for it in the lineup. And if not that, then just for fighting in general, just because they know that they're going to have to fight eventually. And with these heroes, if they can get a couple of trades, they'll be doing okay with the track. On top of that, they need some movement speed, and they need to be able to catch up to these kind of quick heroes. Not necessarily quick, but, you know, just... Like you said, elusive, I guess, to a certain extent. But looking at the last bands, it's going to be the Alchemist for Team Liquid and the Templar Assassin. Alchemist is pretty standard Timbersaw. stuff there. Timbersaw is going to come out from Team Liquid. Mm. And I, I think that might be mid Timbersaw, but I'm not sure. I mean, looking at these lanes for Liquid, it's like every four out of the five heroes are really hard to kill. And Rubik could become very hard to kill if he steals Shadow Walk, if he steals Track, if he steals Illusory Orb. Uh, Liquid, to me, if they have a good start, this is such a comfortable game for them. Because when you're up against Wisp, the one way you can get into trouble is, even if it's an even game, if they can just relocate and pick anyone off. Uh, again, I think remaining. Alliance can snowball, but it's all about S4. If he gets an early blink, Five you fight, use remaining. effective relocate ganks. The bounty hunters joining the fights maybe gets track around like the 8 to 10 minute mark. Uh, then it could be Alliance's game, but... They're the team that has, to me, more pressure on them to kind of perform. None of these heroes scale particularly well with farm. Uh, Alliance much more reliant on their positioning and their movement and having a good start. Liquid, uh, more options for them. They can sit back and farm. They can take fights. I mean, Timbersaw can just get out of control in a 1v1. So too can Bat. Lifestealer in the safe lane with a Rubik can definitely kill an offlane bounty hunter. So I'm liking Liquid's draft a bit better, but we're going to have to see what Alliance does. And no matter how the draft goes, execution can always turn around even a bad draft. So let's see what Alliance's last pick is going to be. Looks like it should be Lotus here. Yeah. And do you think this is a CK right now for Alliance because they have the IO or are they going to go down a different route? Mm. It could be a CK, but it's he's not really that uh, he can struggle against Lifestealer and Timbersaw. Timbersaw uh, will remove remaining. your strength with the, what is it, I always get the two spells mixed up. The, the Whirling Death of its hitting a tree, yeah. that's, your, that's your base stat, so you're losing a lot of damage there. <laughs> Lifestealer obviously effective. They'll go Tiny Whisk. Wow. So, all right, well, now they have a hero that if he gets big is going to be trouble for almost anyone. Lifestealer is naturally good against Tiny because the Rage will block the Craggy, uh, Craggy uh, what's it called, Craggy Shell, Craggy Exterior. Uh, craggy exterior stuns, but I mean, if Tiny gets big enough, he can man mode almost any carry in the game, even a life stealer. So, I like this pick from Alliance. I feel like they needed a really potent late gamer, not so like a semi-carry, like a Sven or uh, something, but someone who could just go completely out of control and bonkers. Uh, let's see what Alliance does, though. Liquid, still to me, I think they've got more options, uh, and a lot of this game just comes down to S4. Can he step up? Yeah, and that's the big deal. I mean, we'll see. And, and if he can win that lane, they'll have a good start and, uh, of course, a good foundation, I think, for the early to mid-stages of the game. But, well, this is going to be game number two. Of course, Team Liquid already taking that first game, which is a huge victory for them. We'll see if they can take the second one or if Alliance bounce back. On the Alliance, we have S4 on the puck going mid right now. In top lane, Admiral Bulldog is going to be on the Bounty Hunter. Down to the bottom lane, Tri lane, Loda on the Tiny. EGM is going to be playing the IO or the Wisp, and Aki is going to be on his favorite Chen and LD. Uh, Team Liquid's all yours. Team Liquid, 1-0 and in the best of two format. They already are 7-0 and uh, in the group, guaranteed to advance his first place, but they're out for blood. They're out to make a statement here. TC, your safe lane lifestealer, way to on the support Abaddon. We have Fluff and stuff handling that support Rubik. Dust picked up early on, so they may go for a kill here if they can catch Bulldog. Koikfa, jungling is the bat rider, uh, and last but not least, we will have Bulba on the solo mid, Timbersaw. So, Timbersaw, something that Alliance has seen before. The S4 definitely played against the mid. It's not going to be a complete shocker like maybe the Elder Titan was last game. I'm very curious to see if Bulldog can be effective in this offlane, because Rubik Lifestealer is actually pretty damn good for killing him. You know, you have the lift, you have dust to slow him down, and then open wounds on top of it. Bulldog definitely wants to slow down Koikva in the jungle as the Batrider, uh, or at least disrupt these the pole camps. But if he gets caught by a dust, 
uh, and there's two heroes there. He's probably going to drop. Yeah, we may no, see er repeat no early of... boots for him, which we, which really we makes may see it easier repeat. to kill. Repeat of Mihawk in the first game, which is, <laughs> or I guess the uh, uh, the second game of against uh, Force Sweet Revenge. But you know, oh, they, I think they heard, they might have heard him Shadow Walk. There's a lot of pings coming out, but yeah, he'll be okay. Yeah. So uh, he he's probably going to look to body block either the big camp or the small camp here. And, Either way, the small camp's important for Batrider, because the way that you bat jungle as Batrider is you kill the small camp, you stack the big camp, and once you hit level 2, then you use Sticky Napalm and Firefly to kill the stacked big camp. But if you're blocking that small camp, that's where he gets his first level from. Uh, and without it, could really slow him down. Now he'll rotate to the big camp. So Bulldog, just playing hide and seek. and Well, instead, Koikva, he'll go for the Alpha Wolves, and gets fortunate, no rock golems. If these were golems, could have really hurt him, but he'll recover from this pretty nicely. Yeah, I mean, this is fine. I mean, he's fine with taking the Alpha Wolf, so he'll take a little bit more damage than maybe he would have if, of course, it was, uh, you know, if he could have grabbed that small camp. But that's not the case here, and he's actually Admiral Bulldog blocks it again with his body, so that's not going to happen. So, uh, Quickfoot is going to have to wait. This is going to be Mud Golems uh, respawning as it gets, of course, stacked up here at least a little bit. Admiral Bulldog is going to do some right click damage, but he's kind of just being a nuisance. He's not able to grab experience from this. There's a salve going, and Admiral Bulldog might try to cancel it, but it's going to be a little bit too late, I think, as the salve has already brought him back to full health. It's going to be pretty much free form for Lota here in the bottom lane, similarly for the top lane for TC as, uh, well, it's not really like Admiral Bulldog's doing anything to stop this. And he's gonna, just going to be kind of annoying here. He's going to actually go into lane now, and that's going to be some experience for him, and he'll try to leech that as much as possible. So we'll see what they want to try to do here for both sides. But the score is going to be the mid matchup, and S4 is going to take a rolling death to the face, but that's fine. Um, actually, six last hits going for Bulba and five for S4, but still relatively even this early on. Yeah, bo both heroes should get a lot of farm in this lane. It's pretty hard for Timbersaw to kill a puck unless the puck misuses the orb. So uh, don't expect I anyone to die unless there's a rune or a gank of some kind. Both heroes are going to continue farming. Uh, I think Bulldog's done, already done a fantastic job, though. He body blocked the small camp twice. He d he he was sitting at the big camp where Koikfa was, uh, in case Koikfa went to stack it. But he saw Koikfa wasn't coming to stack the big camp, so then he body blocked the, the that small camp a second time. So Koikfa's already been set back quite a bit. Now he's finally got his first stack of the game on the big camp, but he'll, he'll be one stack behind here, and uh, we'll have to see how much this slows him down. But we're definitely not going to see like a six and a half minute blink like he had last time. Right. You know, and so that that is kind of concerning for him, but at the same time, he's still doing okay with what he's got here. He's got some nice wildkins, of course the Firefly is going. He's still only level 2 right now. The tier 2 tower taking a lot of damage bottom, as Voda already took that tier 1 tower. They're using this pushing strategy early on with, of course, Aki. Looks like he had the, I believe, Wildkin War Chief just trying to cut the creep wave off, and he will do it again. And Fluff is down here, but there's not a whole lot he can do to stop this. I mean, he can Fable, but, you know, that's going to pull the creep wave at least, which is good. And actually, EG yeah, was thinking about going on him, but... Fluff's going to get a ton of experience. I mean, that's like two and a half waves. I mean, yeah. ar arguably even close to three. It's got three range creeps in it. It is a Midas, though, for Loda. Loda, there was a point, uh, I want to, back when Alliance was no Tidehunter, where Loda was getting some flack for being too greedy as a carry player, always going Midas, not participating Radiant's in fights as much. And he actually publicly tweeted, uh, as we might see it go top, Bulldog's running right into a sentry. Uh, he publicly tweeted, oh, he's actually going for a kill. He might oh, fight Koikva. Koikva. Oh, oh, first Bulldog. blood, Admiral Bulldog again. Wow. What a play. Yep. Uh, oh, and well, they get the counter kill for TC, but uh, Loda basically said, like, I'm going to reevaluate my carry play. And going into TI3, he was, he became a much more active carry. Well, this is going to be uh, a more of a greedy game for him. So he'll go for Midas again. Felt like in game one he had no impact. I don't know if that was entirely his fault. Maybe just Lifestealer not. Seems like it doesn't do very well against TC with Natural Order making him a lot less survivable. But, yeah, we'll see this game. Loda going for late game. EGM trying to force that level 6 as soon as possible. With the first blood and now with a DD on S4 getting a lot of far mid, you gotta say this game is looking a lot more even than game one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know the I think the early damage coming out from the Elder Titan, of course the just the impact that he had is not gonna be nearly as much, I think, as the Timber Saw. He'll still have a, a pretty large impact, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough. And you don't really I don't think you don't go Midas a lot of the times you, you can get it at three minutes. I mean he had the recipe at three minutes and, and he pretty much had the Midas itself at three minutes as well. So it, it was similar in the last game. But yeah. I think this game, it's a little bit better off. I mean, they have, of course, it's, that it's, early kill. That's true. And I think it's also different because he's got a Wisp. So that Wisp can move him around the map. Right. He doesn't need, like, phase boots to find kills of his own. Uh, but I, I just got to commend Bulldog. To me, he's the player of the game so far. So much pressure onto Koikva. And he's even if he's not necessarily killing the stacks, it's just the threat of him being there. They're being forced to drop sentry wards, to deploy dust at times even. And in spite of that, he got the first blood. Fluff and stuff now trying to do the same thing as Rubik, but Rubik's a little bit of a cheaper kill if you catch him. You don't have to buy dust or sentries for him. 
Right. And look at this, another body block. This is very aggravating. He's doing it again, and Admiral Bulldog is getting his job done here in the top lane. He doesn't have the most experience in the world, but he's doing pretty well for himself. Fluff's actually been roaming down to the bottom lane for the past couple of minutes. He got level 4 from that creep wave that you talked about after the tier 1 tower was taken, so he's got some decent experience here. Bulba has no mana. He's going to go ahead and bottle crow. It's, I believe the bottle's coming back to him right now, and on top of that, a bunch of other stuff, including a hand of Midas recipe, which is done for TC. I think he has gloves of haste already on him. No, he doesn't actually. He just needs about 200 gold for that, so the Midas is going to be later for TC, and that means that Lotus should have a pretty decent early game. Admiral Bulldog here sitting on the high ground as well just kind of viewing Bulba but that's it yeah he's only level three and he has no points in shuriken toss like you need that magical burst against timber saw because i mean that standard timber saw mid where you just skip the timber attack. chain and you well standard timber saw build in general it feels with the reactive armor uh, and whirling death max you're not going to kill him unless you have a ton of magical burst so they're not going to kill him but bulldog's going to get some experience top now level four midas just now delivered on the life stealer Alliance are in a good place at this point. The Batrider's been slowed down effectively. Bolt was not getting out of control so far mid, although this haste ring could change it. You're getting levels on your uh, your bounty hunter, and your Tiny's farming his ass off. Already phase boots up for load. And no, Treads. Uh, he'll go for the Treads Ags, which is the better farming build. Uh, and EGM's getting closer and closer to level 6, so Alliance, well, they've stabilized after what was a pretty brutal game 1, and they're definitely going to make more of a game out of this number 2. Yeah, absolutely, and and this game shouldn't get too out of control unless Bulba finds some huge kills with that Timber Saw. I mean, because he's got so much damage coming out from, of course, the Whirling Death, Chakram, and even the Timber Chain when he levels it up, and that'll be a big deal. And similarly, Quakefoot, he's having a tough time, and it's still going to be a pretty quick blink dagger. It's not going to be the fastest that we saw in the last game, but still going to be pretty good. I mean, he's already at 1,800 gold. You know, the jungle camps have been killed. They're going to respawn. He'll get back in the jungle, grab a couple more camps, and then grab that blink dagger. Roughly about eight minutes, maybe even nine minutes, which is not too bad, obviously, but... Um, if they start ganking, if they start playing as a team, they might be able to grab a couple of kills here, and that might put them in a good position. They're going to TP mid and maybe do a infest bomb. Yep, oh. next bomb on the timber cell. <laughs> Look at this. Great, great timing to do it with Bulba having a haste. So not just blind. I don't think they would go for this without the haster, but with it, there's nothing There's nothing really to keep Lota alive here, and in they oh, go. He's boy. so screwed. He is going to go down. The Chakram going to grab that kill. Bulba grabs an easy one. The Infest doing so much damage on top of that. So just an easy kill. And you mentioned the haste rune. That was a big deal for that kill. And now he's going to get back to the mid lane with only, you know, maybe a minute or so far missed. So well played coming out from Liquid. Yeah, now the lane's pushing. So with a pull coming, well, it looks like EGM will get the experience. Top lane, Bulldog. Prepared to pounce, but can he actually get a kill with Ake? This is going to be interesting. Here we go. Well, with that's 4 they can. Aphotic Shield's gonna go. Fluff is gonna get Dream Coiled up right now. He may go down. He's gonna do some damage with the Fable. That's the Illusory Orb, and that's S4 grabbing a nice kill. So they just say, okay, we can do that too. We'll roam and gank you. And they do just that as the lane was pushing in the top lane. The tier 1 tower is gonna take some damage, but it's fine at this point. Yeah, and off of that, Ake gets level 6. So the next time that Liquid goes for a kill, it might not happen. I mean, maybe we see... With the Haster in there, they were gonna get that kill on the Tiny regardless. But uh, especially with Wisp about to have Relocate, EGM, Earn up already, and Magic Stick could turn the tides of these fights. Tiny now a lot harder to kill because the supports are having a better time. Ake farming the enemy jungle and a lot of big items coming out now. The Blink Dagger for Koikva is about to be picked up. Arcane Boots, Treads, Smokes. Everybody's ready, prepping for that second round of aggression and it's coming very soon. Yeah, they're getting ready to fight and they certainly are up in the top lane. It looks like they might want to go with Admiral Bulldog and Aki here on the backside to go for Waitsu. He's got borrowed time, so it's not going to be easy to kill him. He I don't know about getting... this dive. Oh, the Centaur Con train is going to go. The Centaur Con stop. There's one, there's two, but now he's back pretty much up to full health right now. Bulba gets silenced at least for a time being as he got silenced, I believe, from uh, S4 in the mid lane, man, yeah. but that's it. Well, th so. I mean, that silence was pretty big. I think maybe could have killed off one of those heroes, but uh, then again, he didn't have that much mana. It would have been hard to chase, so... Look at Fluff. <laughs> Just this support Rubik aggressively stealing the enemy neutrals with a couple heroes off the map, but they know that one just TP top, uh, so they feel a little bit more comfortable to do it. And but they really the should. bottom. They, I don't know if they should. There's TP's coming from the side. Loda's getting raged up right now. The Dream is going to fly. Fable, Hand of God. Is Loda going to go down? He's close to it. TC going to die for this. He's got no creeps to infest. S4 is going to grab the kill on the Batrider. Now he's going to turn around. Looking for S4 is, of course, TC. Now a double kill going for S4 as well. Enough damage. Is he going to get out? He's going to phase and jaw. TC cannot do enough here. Now he's getting chased. He's got rage himself. He's going to infest into a creep and miss a lot of that damage. He wants Loda. Can he get it? Not going to happen. He's going to use his Midas to get out of there. He's tracked up. He's got enough mana for Rage as he uses Stitch Charge. He needs to Rage now. No, he doesn't need to. But a big gank coming out for Alliance. They take smoke. two kills. And now Liquid. They're not done yet. They're going to smoke up. Way too in Bulba. Look for the Aiphotic Shield to be deployed onto Bulba. He'll be diving in here. EGM low. Out of mana. Can't even... 
other way and oh he misses. missed it i think he still got him though yeah Bulba I think jumping in picks up the kill liquid are saying it's time to fight and we're just not gonna stop we may just see them five man and look to force these fights because if they're not then that's where your relocate ganks now come into play. Level six up on the wisp. Uh, Liquid will be forced to group a little more. Meanwhile, mid lane, Ake, they're prepping with the Firefly. There's no lasso though, and no flame break either to push him back. However, Bulba is TPing in here. There's the illusion of the stun from the Centricon. A lot of damage. Koikba is gonna fall again. Aki with the Chakram taking a lot of damage. He's still alive, however. Rage up on TC now. Loda taking a lot of damage. He's gonna fall as well. TC with the right clicks. Tether Stun's gonna go through. Rage up, not enough. And a two for two trade yeah. so far. As Fluff comes on the backside to grab a kill. Dream Coil on way two. Fluff tethers it back into the fight. EGM relocate out of there. And uh, they're going to head back home. And that means that EGM is... Uh, actually, he relocated from the well. As I missed that. But. Yeah, he relocated into the fight. Then tethered back to get the stun on the life tutor, Which secured the kill. I, that was an amazing worst play by EGM. But uh, again, Loda's gotten picked off here. So you got to say for Liquid... Uh, they have to feel okay about this. <laughs> Look at Fluff and stuff, tethering in, looking for a lift and a kill, but Bulldog barely able to go in Viz in time. This game is, uh, it's like a circus already. Six to five, 11 minutes in. But it feels like it's 30 kills worth of action. Everybody moving around the map. Nobody content to sit back and farm. Uh, I feel like for Alliance, especially for Loda, just needs to be more selective about his fights because ultimately, if he gets farmed enough, it's going to be hard to deal with him late game. He's got track gold on his side. You have Reloki to bring you into the fights. He doesn't need to be TPing in uh, and would be better off. Just get some stacks that work towards your Aghanims. Uh, still, he's keeping up in terms of farm. That really early Midas is paying off, so definitely all not lost, but just needs to be a little more patient about when he engages. Yeah, absolutely, and he, I think he's going to be going for drum next. He's got that Bracer, which means that he's going to be able to fight a little bit more effectively. At, at this point, he doesn't really have anything. I mean, Treads and Midas are really not enough to fight in these engagements, even though, you know, TC's doing the same thing, obviously, but only with FaZe and Midas instead. He's going to be going for a drum next Hot himself. Koikva is going to get tracked up and taken down, but not yep, enough to TP rotations. Okay. Wow. Relocate coming in as well. They got to back off immediately. This is going to be bad. Admiral Bulldog may be in trouble. There's the Chakram going through the leap, or the damage coming in for Bulba. Now S4 grabbing the kill with the loser up. Jaunt in, looking for more. Tracks up. On way two now. Dream Coil is going to fly. Koikva trying to get out. S4 diving the blink away. Should be enough to save his life. They're still diving here. They've got the track. They want this kill. Janata might be enough there. And it will. Admiral Bulldog grabbing the kill. Now under the tower. Way two getting dove here. You can see he has no borrowed time. It has actually just went to him. The Aphotic Shield might be enough to grab the kill. There is going to be the Hand of God. A big dive in the top lane. Grabs three Meanwhile, kills for Alliance. Bottom lane. Final lane, EGM was being dope. The Hand of God keeps him in fighting shape. And now with the TP in on S4, maybe they look to go. No, no Blink Dagger yet. Well, oh, they are. They're, oh, gonna they're going to turning in. around. S4 jaunting in. There is a Tether Stun available, but not through the rage. Pops back out, jumping in. S4 just picked up his Blink. Can Blink away, will Blink away. I got to say, I, I'm really liking this Tiny as a way to do a Timber Saw. Because when you look at Avalanche Toss, when both skills are maxed as a combo, it's one of the biggest magical bursts in the game. I mean, it's like, I think it's like close to a thousand damage before reduction if you get the combo off perfectly. And reactive armor, not gonna help you against that. Bulba looked very squishy, whereas normally Timbersaw looks quite hard to kill. So a lot of magical bursts from Alliance and uh, just good movement as well. Um, as a result, nine to five now, gold experience going their way. Liquid, I still think they've got the better five man. They just have to, they basically just have to not get caught, and they'll big smoke up now, head towards the bottom lane. We'll see if they can Radiant's find a better fight. Yeah, absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head. I think Bulba went down too quickly in that fight to be really a factor, and that's kind of the reason why they really couldn't do anything about top, and TC stayed bottom, trying to grab that kill on EGM, and the fact that he's able to live is a big deal as well. They're going to grab a tier 1 tower, they're going to try to 5-man, except for the fact of Fluff, who's still top, Radiant's with 1,000 gold in the bank. Uh, but that is a nice pickup for Bulba grabbing that tower that's going to be drummed on for TC on top of that. Now we're going to see the counter push coming out from Loda and EGM in the mid lane. And uh, this already, this tower's taking a lot of damage. They can fortify it and they can try to defend it. Uh, and they should be able to. S4's not mid, so Alliance need to back off now. TC charging in. Nah, uh, no, I'm not going to go. Meanwhile, Ake just parading through the enemy jungle. This has been a game of, like, supports with huge cojones. <laughs> you know, we just see Fluff strutting through the enemy jungle. It's now the same for Ake. EGM getting dove by Lifestyle, living through it all. Liquid going for another tower mid. There is a relocate. Coils off cooldown. There's no hand of God, but 
Uh, I don't know if Lick would really want to commit to this. They're this probably is... trying to force the TP it back off. This is a tough fight for them to go for. They already see the uh, Hellbear Smasher coming in with the Thunderclap. Track is up on Bulba now. As for Blinken, there's going to be, of course, the Dream Call. The Relocate's coming on top of that. There's going to be a lot of damage. TC raised up. He's going to get thrown way too in trouble, but he's got borrowed time as well. Bluff is low. Meanwhile, Loda's going to get blown up. He's still alive, but just barely. And now, Hand of God flying out as well. They're still chasing. They're going to, of course, break off that chase. Relocate back out. S4, open wounds up. Chakram's going to fly. Jaunt away. Will they die of this? Everyone's low on, on the side of Alliance. And everyone is still alive for Liquid, except for Fluff, who goes down. And that's the only kill that happened in that last fight, somehow. Yeah, they're, they're trading, but Alliance... Uh, in general, they're trading this game. But Alliance has the bounty on her. So you got to give them the advantage there. Gold... Still 2,000, not overwhelming experience, 3,000. Pretty close, S4 jumping back in mid, silences and jumps out. Uh, I, l I really like the item selection from Alliance this game. I mean, they're all standard items, but they're really helpful. You have your Vlad's on Bounty Hunter, so good when you have a Tiny, a really heavy melee DPS. Gives him a lot of additional survivability. Tiny has really low base armor, and with the Vlad's, well, he's sitting a lot more comfortable. Uh, I believe he's sitting at 10 armor with it. So between that, between the tether, uh, hand of God, Radiant's this tiny is just not an easy kill. And that's before Loda gets his eggs. That's before Loda gets his AC or his BKB. Uh, it's Alliance hanging on for now, but Liquid just relentless aggression going for the tier one mid. If they get this Radiant's tower, it's going to be hard for Alliance to contest Roche. Yeah, and it looks like the tower is going to fall. And I want to point something out to you. You talked about Bulba getting blown up by the Tiny with, of course, that combo. Look what he's got in his inventory right now. He's got the cloak going for him, so he yeah, is getting that pickup. magical resistance. Yeah, they, 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 they probably even want to go for a pipe, because between Tiny, uh, Wisp does decent magical damage, and then the Puck. Just those two, the yeah. Tiny and the Puck, make it worth it. Koikva yeah. in the jungle, Radiant caught out, blink, oh, explodes to S4. Easy kill for him, and now he's just got to make his way out. Yep, he's just gonna say, all right, well, I'm done here. I guess I'll get out of here now. But with that being said, they did take the tier one tower mid. They took the tier one tower bottom. So there's a couple of tier ones missing for Alliance. And uh, there's only one left, and that's top. And that's already taken a significant amount of damage. You can see it's actually pretty close to deny range here. Admiral Bulldog's looking through the jungle right now. He's gonna go ahead and just pass by this tier one and tier two tower mid and potentially heading down bottom. Now, speaking of bottom, potential gank on Loda not gonna happen. And uh, they're going to back off now. Triple Centaur for Ake. This tower, not long for this world. It's going to fall. It goes to S4. Blinks away. Ake in a tiny bit of trouble. No, he'll be okay. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Fluff TPs out just in the nick of time as well. Everybody, barely two ships crossing paths in the night and all getting away. All the while, Loda, he's your lead farmer, continues to accelerate his farm. And with the Wisp at his side, you gotta say Loda is the hardest carry in this game if he's able to get the right clicks off. So, still feeling Alliance is in a slightly more comfortable position. It's close. Track Gold could be the difference maker here. Game I just think Alliance have the better vision right now, and I think that's what's making the difference. That aggressive ward in a Liquid's jungle, that's what set up the kill earlier for S4. Uh, we see good warding towards Roshan, so Liquid can't easily sneak it. And Liquid right now, they're playing blind if you actually look at their vision. So that's the priority for them is getting some sentries up, maybe even getting a gem at some point to deal with this bounty hunter. Uh, as a result, Alliance are in control of the game. Yeah, they absolutely are. And I think a, a big deal has been Admiral Bulldog and, and actually just getting vision, not only with Shadow Walk, also grabbing kills on Quakefoot with the help of S4 and just ganking him in general. I mean, you look at Koikva, he's only, he's actually died five times already. He's had a tough early start to this game. His, uh, of course, he died first blood, giving it up to Admiral Bulldog, and he couldn't really get any of the jungle camps in his favor because Bulldog had blocked a lot of them early on. But now, top lane. up in the top lane. It looks like we're going to fight here. An army of centaurs. <laughs> TC could kill two of these. He's got his Midas in 10 seconds, and he's got it fast, so the centaur army could be not long for this world. Well, they're going like to have those, those lucky centaur cons, they're not going to die yet. But, meanwhile, you know, they're gonna go in. Oh. Now, My game lagging a little bit there. Oh, sorry about that. But, yeah, Liquid are getting pincer. This could be bad for them. Oh, TC, yeah, chain stun, double centaur stun, triple centaur stun, oh avalanche toss, he goes full to nothing, and now on the backside, a huge fight's breaking out. Yeah, this is not good, way too in some trouble, Bulba's gonna fall next, too much damage coming out, way too already uses borrowed time, Fluff in trouble, gonna toss EGM back, there's the fade bolt, hand of God going as well, three down, Bulba's gonna buy back. back now, trying to make it to the fight, will he be able to, Chakram's gonna go up, but I'm not sure about this now, wait, Koikva, silenced up as well, he's gonna get taken down, that's gonna be a toss kill, Bulba getting dove as well, well, it's way too. This might be an entire team boy, and that's with Bulba already buying back. Centaur stun as well. Double kill going for the tiny. And wow. And you, Alliance just, I, I mean, Ake, first of all, this game is on US East. It's not on Europe. 
so he's played with a bit of delay. Triple Centaur stun against a life stealer. Never got to use his rage or his infest. TC fall to nothing. Perfect avalanche toss combo. And that once that kill happened, the fight just fell apart Dyer's from there. Alliance now attack. now things start to get out of control for them. Loda uh, it's pretty much has his Aghanim Scepter at this point. In fact, already delivered. Yep. Now can go into a BKB, an Assault Kura, some Mantle Style. Really, any of them would be decent. Uh, for, there's a lot of magic damage. There are some things that go through BKB. Uh, whatever he wants to go for. He's getting really fat. Sight the Vice isn't too far off on S4. One more big fight like that, and you're probably looking at Alliance taking Roche, taking a tier 2 mid and or bottom, uh, if not just flat out winning the game. That's a lot of track kills, Ma, and what was once a close gold graph, not close any longer. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 7,500 gold, and it's about a 5,000 swing in that past fight, about, you know, five minutes difference, and that's how much of a difference it makes. So already, that means Alliance is looking good at 20 minutes in the game, and, and this is what they couldn't do really in the last game. They just got too far behind. This game, they might have been behind a little bit earlier on, but they were able to come back with some really great plays, some really efficient, of course, kills in that top lane and ganks. You know, once they get one hero, then they say, okay, let's keep going, let's snowball into that next little bit of the fight, and they're able to grab a bunch of kills. And meanwhile, TC is still only sitting on armlet, which is not bad, you know, armlet phase, Midas, and the drum as well, but... You know, Boba can't do a lot. He's getting bursted down too quickly in these fights, which is surprising. And you talked about it. Timbersaw's got two points of reactive armor. And that's a pretty good ability to make you tankier, but not when you're getting bursted down by magic damage, so. Yeah, the avalanche toss is... I mean, normally Tiny with an Ags, it's all about the right click. But this game, it's about the avalanche toss, test of faith, uh, as well as the Puck's burst. And we're at a point now where not only is Alliance leading, but they've got the lineup that is better at extending that lead because they have Wisp, because they have elusive heroes in the Bounty Hunter and the Puck. Split pushing, Loda's gonna take a tier two bottom. And what Dying was happening in the previous, oh, it was one of those previous games that we cast uh, with Revenge versus Alliance, is now what's happening here to Liquid is they're just, the noose is getting cinched. They can't really move freely. They have to five man, they're getting out farmed. And even when it comes to team fights, a good blink silence coil is like, the fight's just lost for Liquid at that point. So yeah. we might see an engagement man, huge smoke from Liquid. Yeah, Quirk is actually backing off. He's going to move around. He's actually got TC inside of him. And, well, they're all still top for the most part, except for, of course, Loda and EGM down in the bottom lane. But they can relocate at any time to be brought into the fight. And it looks like Liquid's going to say, all right, let's head back top. Let's try to fight here. Five versus three until they they're relocate. Ready and let's this. see if we can get they a pick off. They have and, a relocate. Uh, oh, big size. Big three call going in. There's going to be, of course, a nice last one. But it doesn't matter. Hand of God is going to fly. Liquid is taking too much damage. TC still at full health. Now the open wounds. But, of course, as we're jaunting away, way too in trouble as well. The Aphonic Shield. Not keeping him alive. That's a triple kill going for the Tiny. TC getting out. GG is called. And that should be it. They knew when they were outplayed here. And they were just too far behind in this game. TC still may go down. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. But a well played oh, game coming he out from the line. Yeah, too late there. But still. Well, Alliance strikes back. Liquid, amazing performance in game one. It felt like they completely outdrafted and outlaned Liquid. In this game, I didn't feel like Liquid got completely outlaned, but it was more like they trading evenly just wasn't good enough. Not against, not against Wisp. Not when, not when Loda has his Midas like a good three minutes uh, ahead of the life stealer for TC. And I think the MVP for me, even though we didn't see much of him at all later on in the game, is actually Bulldog, just because of what he did in those first few minutes in the jungle. Blocked the small camp twice, disrupted the poles, was stealing creeps forced the supports to drop two centuries, blowing dust as well. His economic impact, you can't see it on the scoreboard, but it was definitely there. And on the back of that, Liquid do finish first in Group C. They'll be 7-1, and one, Alliance finishing 6-2 and two because of that loss to Revenge. But man, what a way to end this group. It was a hell of a series at a day. Yeah, absolutely. Really enjoyed casting it, guys. Of course, you, you mentioned how well Alliance played. I think they did a really good job. And I think if Admiral Bulldog, I mean, only one death at 22 minutes into the game, I think he's doing his job correctly. But... With that being sure. said, everybody, it's been a pleasure casting for you. Uh, big shout out to Beyond the Seminate and, of course, LD and everybody for allowing me to cast for you guys. It's been a pleasure casting for you. If you enjoyed the cast, my name is Mont. You can follow me at twitter.com slash dota 2 I'll have some more casting in the near future. That's including today. Um, and, yeah, just big thanks to you, LD. And uh, any shout outs before we head out of here? No, that's it, guys. Seriously, you should follow Mott. Support your up-and-coming casters on the scene. Mott's actually been doing it for a while, but uh, twitter.com slash dota 2 That's M-A-U-T, Dota2. As for me, if you do want to follow me, twitter.com slash LDDota. Huge turnout today. We Play is getting close to where it gets really interesting. We have one more group, Group D. That'll be starting in next week on Wednesday, and uh, or this upcoming week, I should say. And then after that, we go into the round of eight. We get it. Basically, at that point, you're looking at... a 
an elite tournament with all top teams, assuming uh, the teams we want make it out of Group D. But with that being said, guys, we are done here for today. We will rebroadcast all of today's action. If you want to watch more Dota, you can head over to MLG. Gods and Merlini are casting the NA qualifiers for full sale. I believe they're wrapping up today, actually. So that's twitch.tv slash MLG. Thank you all for tuning in. Once again, follow Mott, follow myself if you'd like, and we'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye.